What is this research chemist doing in the woods armed with a pair of scissors? He's gathering the ingredients for a very special recipe. I'm collecting leaves and twigs. We want this material to solve one of the great problems of the age. It's the problem of the planet's energy supplies. Marcus Antonietti wants to use a technique he's developed to cook up some coal based on the way nature does it. But instead of nature's millions of years, his method only takes a few hours. But first, the ingredients and the procedure. The biomass goes into the autoclave, a kind of pressure cooker. Leaves, pine cones and other plant residues are put into the pot. Water goes in too, along with a citric acid catalyst. The mixture releases a lot of heat, in other words, energy. We underestimated this when we started. We could calculate how much energy was stored in the sugar, in the leaf material, but the first time, as you see, we had a runaway reaction, which is obviously dangerous, so we need to carry it out under safe conditions. Now the reaction is being carried out in an experimental kitchen on the roof of the institute. Here it's no problem if the hydrothermal carbonization, as the process is called, causes minor explosions. It's all part of the joy of experimentation for the 46-year-old director of the Max Planck Institute of Colloids and Interfaces. Antonietti says he's only been able to pursue this simple idea since establishing himself in this field. It really is a simple reaction. The ingredients just have to be heated for 12 hours at 180 degrees Celsius. And the coal is ready. The single major byproduct of the reaction is water, which can be filtered off. In contrast to other biomass techniques, this reaction does not generate carbon dioxide, and it gives a higher energy product, which even smells acceptable. It has a strong smell, very masculine, like tobacco. If it were up to Antonietti, this reaction could go large scale. The 50,000 tons of plant refuse that accumulate yearly in Berlin could be converted into 20,000 tons of usable carbon. The Max Planck Society only does basic research, but with enough engineering backup, we could establish this in two to five years. It's very simple, there just has to be support for it. Could this laboratory coal be produced on a large scale? Antonietti says it makes economic sense. The energy needed for the heating is no greater than that required by other methods. Until that day comes, the Max Planck scientists intend to go on with their research. They want to study their laboratory coal in detail. This is the structure of a pine cone before. And after carbonization. But not all coal is alike. Like in a restaurant, you can have your steak rare or well done. We can adjust our coal to be just a bit refined, or we can cook it until it's like hard coal. One end of the spectrum is topsoil, the other is hard coal. When the researchers cook their coal mixture for just five hours, the result is topsoil. This nutrient-rich earth can be used to help barren landscapes bloom. Soft lignite requires nearly as much cooking as hard coal, but in order to get energy out of the laboratory coal, it doesn't necessarily have to be burned. We're dreaming of a carbon fuel cell. That would be direct electrochemical conversion of the coal, without the actual burning process. Other applications are in chemistry, for example, directly making gasoline out of the coal. <laughs> the scientists intend to pursue those dreams using nature as a model. Their next project is to make petroleum, which is a stage in the production of coal. So sometime in the near future, these laboratory visions may find a place in everyday life.